Monday will be the 10th day of Abib. And the Lord God Almighty tell us to do something. He said, on the 10th day, you are going to select a lamb. Amen and amen. Take a lamb for each our soul. But when I was reflecting and pondering a little bit on what I'm going to do on Monday, I said, God, I will choose Jesus, the lamb that you provide for us. And throughout the week, he kept sending me to the story of Abraham. He keeps sending me to the story of Abraham. And, and I went to Genesis chapter 22. And uh, <clears throat> I was able to see something extraordinary in it. Let's start the reading together. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I, here I am, he replied. The Lord called Abraham, said, Abraham, so God knows your name. Don't be surprised. And you hear <laughs> your name. And you said, who's calling me? And I've heard God call me many times. He called Abraham. And Abraham answered him. Then God said, take your son, your only son. Isaac, whom you love, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains I will tell you about. My God, my God. And I start meditating on it. And I said, yes, I will choose Jesus. He said, do you really understand the story of Abraham? That was his only son. You have chosen my only son. Amen and amen. We are in a holy month. The month when Jesus died for us. And it is significant when we remember that was also in the month, the month of Passover, when God killed all the firstborn. And God said, yeah, I did that to them. But one day, I will also sacrifice my only son. The price of Jesus, God's limb, we cannot take that lightly. And the Lord said to me, Patrick, when somebody sin, when somebody sin, and 
they do not repent. It's like they kill my son, my only begotten son, all over again. Amen and amen. Let's continue with the reading. We see God asking Abraham to sacrifice his son. You may say, oh boy, this is a hard request. The story. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and saddled his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God has told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. My God, my God. You see him the next day. Hallelujah. God tell him to sacrifice his son. He didn't have any thought and said, oh God, you know, I'm going to rebel on this one. The next day, he saddled his donkey and, and he got his son with him. Amen and amen. You see the obedience of Abraham right there. And when the Lord said in Abib the feast of unleavened bread you cannot come to me empty handed. Look at Abraham. Abraham said okay. Is that what will please you my God? I will do it. And he showed God. And, and, and then they show you it was like a three-day distance. That's mean on the first day he didn't quit. <laughs> on the, uh, he, he's approaching. <laughs> he's marching toward, <laughs> amen, toward the mountain in the region of Moriah. Verse 6, Abraham took the wood for the burnt, burnt offerings and placed it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife, as the two of them went on together. Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, he said, Father, and Abraham would answer, Yes, my son. The fire and the wood are here, Isaac said. But where is the lamb for the birth of a <laughs> You imagine, Abraham said, you know, you carry the wood, my son. <laughs> you carry the wood, my son. Amen and amen. You see Jesus carrying the load. You know, when we are on earth, we have to see ourselves like Isaac. We have to see ourselves like Jesus. We carry him the wood. The wood that will burn us. Amen and amen. And he has a question. My father, I see you have the fire. I see you have the wood. Where is the lamb? He didn't know. He was the lamb. He was the lamb. But in the case of Jesus, Jesus knew. He knew. He was going to be the lamb sacrifice. 
Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. Now, we see Abraham saying to his son, God will provide the lamb. But the son could say, I don't trust you. You know? <laughs> you don't have a lamb. I'm not going up there with you. You got the knife. You got the wood. There is no lamb around. It's me and you. And you are older than me, stronger than me. I cannot say no to you. <laughs> but he went on anyway. In obedience to the word of his father. This is where we get Jesus is the word of God. Because he obeyed the word of God. What the word is saying to us? Monday, on the tenth day, you will choose a lamb. And you will sacrifice that lamb unto me. Like I said to you last week, we are in the post era of Christ. This is the time we are going to say on Monday, my father, I choose Jesus once again. Hallelujah. I choose him as my savior. This is how you begin the new year, the right way. I will start 57, 79 with Jesus. I will hold the hand of Jesus. Amen and amen. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Now it's getting scarier for Isaac. He built the altar. That takes time. He arranged the wood on the altar. And I stay still standing there. He's not ready. <laughs> he could have flee. <laughs> Amen. He bound his son Isaac. Now the son is letting his father tie him up. How many of you can say, God, you are the one that bound me. To this situation because I know God with one word with one word from your mouth I could be free right now I say let his father tie him up this is why prayer is very important to pray God according to your circumstance to see that you are like I say in a situation to see like, like you are Jesus in a situation you are going to a cross right now and you say God not my will your will yes listen to this he bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. This is Jesus right there. Jesus knew in his heart. This is the will of God to die for us. And he let God. You know. Cause him to be in that situation. He didn't say no. God. I don't want this. He didn't say, why me? But like Jesus said, for the joy that was set before me, I am doing, I am doing. I am do the cross. And we know the story. Maybe last week I'm going to talk about all the part Jesus bled for us. He bled for us seven ways. 
Amen and amen. Then, verse 10, Abraham, Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. So, the son was right. Father, you got the knife. Father, you got the wood. Where is the lamb? Now, reality. He is on top of the altar, bound, on top of the wood. And he already knew what his father is going to do to him. How many times in your life you see yourself in a situation practically on the altar? The Lord is watching you. Are you going to rebel, kicking and screaming, fighting with God? But God said to Isaac, you are not going to die. <laughs> because your father trusted me. <laughs> amen and amen. And you are trusted in your father. Amen and amen. This is what the reaction the Lord God Almighty wants from us. In whatever the situation, we have to know that He will provide a way of escape. He will redeem us. But, verse 11, the angel of the Lord called out to Abraham from heaven. Abraham, Abraham. And Abraham answered, Here I am. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. And I went on a meditation. And I said, God, look at that. You said not to come to you empty-handed. Look at Abraham here in this situation. He was willing to give his one and only His one and only son. His own flesh and blood. And I know how hard it is for us to give God our last dollar. Our last dollar bill. Oh God, that last dollar bill, make that all is better than you. <laughs> I can get a dollar sandwich with that. <laughs> yes, he gave. And when you do that, here's the answer. He said, I know that you feel God because you have not withheld from me or so. But I went further and I don't know if you captured that. The angel of the Lord, which was Jesus, talking to Abraham and said, Now, Abraham, I see that you fear God. <laughs> amen, amen. Because you have not withheld your son. Amen, amen. Abraham looked up, and there in a ticket, he saw a ram caught by its horn. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. This is where when you purpose your heart to obey God, when you think you are the one 
who is going to provide the sacrifice, God provided for you. I cannot tell you how many times people said, Pray, Apostle, I know you said I must place something on the altar. And I say to them, Are you willing, if God provided for you, that you will place it on the altar? All my followers, if they obey this word, that cause a chain reaction and they see blessing flowing into their lives. Some people may say, oh, I receive a little blessing here, but you know, I'm going to take some of it. No, I say you do not have anything now. What if God gave you that money to give that offering? Would you give it? But I can tell you, all the people who obey, when God provides the offering and actually gives the offering, and they see their lives change. I can tell you the story of a young man without job. And I say, you, I have to know if you respect prophecy. The Lord wants you to place something on the altar. If you don't place something on the altar, that means you don't value the word of God. This is the first sign to tell me that you will obey the word. And God said, do not come and ask me for word for so. That I give the word. I don't give the word. I don't give the word. Uh, they try to treat me to get a word from me. I don't give the word. The Lord said, where is my offering? Where is my offering? This person has not placed nothing on the altar. Have not placed something on the altar. That means this person will not respect the word, will not obey the word. Amen and amen. Let's continue. Verse 14. So Abraham called that place. The Lord will provide. This is where you get the word. A, a, a Jehovah Jireh. The Lord will provide. And to this day it is said, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. Amen and amen. When you are approaching the altar, we don't do that over here because we don't want to force people to give and pass the bucket and said, walk up toward the altar here and present your offering. We don't want to embarrass of oh, the first row come first, the second row come second, and try to force people to give. We don't do that here. He said, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. And uh, I have the story of a of a brother who didn't have nothing to give. <laughs> and he said, okay, they said, okay, this, I must walk to the altar. The guy was going to the altar without nothing in his pocket, but a pen or something. <laughs> and then his brother said, I know you don't have anything, it's $20. <laughs> and he said, and he put that $20, he didn't think about eating it, you know. Amen, amen, amen. On the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. What I'm saying unto you, when you say on Monday, I choose Jesus. Okay, Jesus already died for them. But are you going to give, to say thank you? For the seven ways he bled for you? By putting, hallelujah, said, you are the guilt of it. You take away my guilt. Therefore, I am going to give something as a guilt offering. Oh, you take away my sin. You are the sin offering, Jesus, when you die on the cross. I will give a sin offering. You give me peace. You are my peace offering. 
I will give a piece of me. A lot of you, you want to wave your poverty goodbye. Jesus is the wave of her. When they said the, uh, the priest take the breath and wave it, it's waving situations. But when they stab Jesus on his side, totally empty out, so you may not be empty anymore. This is how you get abundance in your life to the wave of her rings. Verse 15. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, hallelujah, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendant as numerous as the star in the sky as the stand on the seashore. Will you give an offering this season that will trigger an oath from heaven that will cause God to swear that he will bless you in this new year? Amen and amen. This is how. This is how you have a wonderful year. My brothers, my sisters, and the Lord said, Patrick, you will put something on the altar. You will be determined to obey it. And I will swear from heaven. I will swear from heaven. Listen to this. Let's read verse 16 again. So, after the willingness to give, the willingness to give, he didn't give his son. He was willing to give his son. God provide the offering for him. Now, listen to me. I come in Jesus' name and the Holy Spirit is upon me. If you are willing to give your best, when you think it's going to come out from your bank account, God will provide you with the gift. If you are willing, he was willing to give his one and only. Hallelujah. In this case, that was his son. To give his one and only. God said, no. You don't have anything to give me. I will provide you with the gift. I will provide you with the gift. And when you actually give the gift, I will swear. I will swear to bless you. Whatever you give, it's for me. And I will swear to bless you in 5779. My brothers, my sisters, in Jesus' name, I come to tell you, if you are obedient, if you pray on Monday, your first thing, your first prayer is to say to God, I choose Jesus again as my Savior in this brand new year, 5779. And I will place on the altar my gifts of thanksgiving because he sacrificed his life for me. God said. It's not going to even come out of your pocket. I will provide the gift. And I will swear to bless you. If you do this. I can tell you. You will have a wonderful year. In 5779. I say these things in Jesus name. Amen.